Hello guys, so today we are going to talk about uh, the View Transitions API. So if you haven't heard about it, uh, the View Transitions API is a new browser API that will add native animations during uh, page transitions. So navigating between different parts of our website will feel more like a unified experience and uh, more like an app instead of uh, feeling like uh, going to separate places inside our website. So this new API is pretty new and hasn't been added to a lot of uh, browsers, but that is in the process of being fixed. So this video is an attempt by me to show you just how simple the View Transitions API is and how you can easily add it to your web apps without doing a lot of uh, work in the background. So just to give you an idea of how complex or simple this is going to be, we are going to start from scratch on an empty page here. So we only have two things you're working with here is the index.html file which is referencing the main.js file here. So we're going to start on an empty page and then we'll add the view transitions and then you will judge for yourself the complexity of the process. So my idea of what you're going to build is a simple page that is displaying um, a movie title and its image. So let's add a movie section here and then we have uh, the H1 which will be the movie title. So like avatar for example and then the image of the movie. So I have some assets here that you're going to use for the movie images. So for the avatar movie, should be assets, avatar.jpg, uh, like that. So this is how it looks. So we have the movie title and the movie image. So what I want our simple app to do is to have a button that when clicked, will switch between these movies here. So we can add a button here. So button, so let's call it the change button, and then maybe say change movie, like that. So when you click this button, the contents of these two elements should change change. So we are going to add this logic via JavaScript. So as a start, let's have this array here, which is an array of the movies you are going to rotate. So we have already started with Avatar and then we have the other four movies. So let's add the rotation logic, three elements that we want to target. So we have the title element. So we should be document dot query selector should uh, be the title ID. And then we have the button element, which we called the change ID. And then finally, we have the image element, which we gave the image ID. So when you click the button element, we should pick a movie from this movies array and then change the text to the title element to the new movie text and then switch the image to. So that means we add the event listener for the click event for this button. And then we can say call the change movie function. So let's implement the change movie function. So what we can do is rotate between the movies. So we go from the first movie to the last movie, and then we go back to the first movie. So that means we need to keep track of uh, the current movie that you're showing. So because Avatar is uh, the first movie here, we'll start by going to the next move in the array and then do the rotation. So that's why we have the next movie IDX set to one. So that means we pick the movie from the movies array via the next movie IDX value. And then after we pick the movie, we change uh, the value of the next movie IDX to the next item in the array. So after that, then we can uh, change the title content and then change the image SRC. So that should do it. So if we click change movie, it should switch between the movies it's not switching so let's check what we have missed or oh, the image has no id so this should be image like that also the id of this should be title so i think yeah that should cover it so if we click change movie we should now see the text and the image of the movie changing so these are pretty basic version that we can start with so let's go ahead and uh, implement view transitions for this app. So the view transition API is available via document.start view transition. But you remember we mentioned it's still experimental and not available in all browsers. So we do what we normally do when an API may not be available. We check for it. So we just do a check. If document dot start view transition, if it's not there, then we should uh, run or update code like we were before and return. Otherwise, if it is there, then 
we call document dot start view transition and then we provide a callback to this function where we update the ui so here is a brief explanation of what this does so when you call document dot start view transition the browser takes a screenshot of the current state it's in and then inside the callback of the call to start view transition this is called after the transition completes so after the transition completes we update the title and the image now the ui of the browser has changed so the work of the browser is to animate between the two states so let's see how this works in action so if we click change movie notice how it seems a bit smoother than it was before so the view transition api is in effect but this is the default animation you can see a sort of a, a fade out fade in animation so when the title changes it sort of fades out of the view then the new title fades into the view same for the image so that is enough to integrate the smooth uh, view transitions into your app so how do we know that the view transition api is in effect so if we open our dev tools and then we can do shift control p and then type animation to show the animations that are running in this page so if we click uh, the pause button here and then click change movie you can see something has changed here so you can see the animations are documented here but also if you look at the elements panel you'll also notice something new so if we click change movie you can see a pseudo element has been added to the dome so if we inspect it further let me reduce this size even more so if we inspect it further you can see a bunch of uh, pseudo elements have been added so you have the view transition element then you have the view transition group then the view transition image pair and then you remember when we were talking about taking screenshots before and after so you can see the old view transition and then the new view transition after the page updates so these pseudo elements are important when customizing how the view transition api works so you can use these pseudo elements to target specific elements and style the animation so we are done with the javascript part of the animations so let's go to the css part so in our style.css here let's start with the h1 element so you can configure the animations to target uh, specific elements so we are animating the avatar and the image element here we can give both animations a name and in css it is the view transition name property so when changing the title we can call it the title transition and also since we change the image we can also give it a name so let's call this transition name image just by isolating the animations by giving them transition names you'll notice something different the animations are now even smoother than they were before you can see as the title changes we now have a sort of a grow animation in conjunction with the fade animation so it is much smoother than it was before and the same happens to the image so giving the transitions uh, names you even get better output without adding any animations or customizations so again if we inspect this and then we change a movie if we look at the transition so let's click change movie so this should be the play icon here and then we click so if you look at the transitions you notice now we have three transition groups so we have the root transition group we have the view transition group for the title which we named and then for the image so these become three separate animations for the whole page for the title and for the image all this is provided by the browser we didn't have to customize anything but we can customize so for example for the image here we can for example try to write a new keyframe so so we can and say at keyframes let's call it uh, maybe we grow the image x property so we're going to scale from 0 to 100 so let's do a scale x which is the start of the transition and then a scale x to 1 which is the end of the transition so we can apply this keyframe to the image transition so we do that by targeting the pseudo elements so we have the view transition old for the image remember we named it image here so we are using the value of the transition name and then we can change the animation name we can also do the same for the new transition so we apply the animation to the old and to the new transition so if we save this and try to change a movie you'll notice the animation has changed so it's now doing the scale x animation that you have just added and for an introduction that should be all that you need to know about view transitions 
So with that as a start point, we can do a lot of cool stuff. So for example, there is a demo on the View Transitions API here by the Google guys where you can transition between multiple pages. So if you click this, you can see we have moved in a new page. If you look at the URL, it's a new URL completely. But the transitions make it seamless. It's like you're in one app and you're not moving between pages. So there's also this cool demo where they use view transitions uh, together with the Astro framework to have this cool UI here where you're able to click through views and back just like uh, you would in an app. So they use this together with the navigation API to achieve this. I'm going to link it uh, in the description so that you can go through the source code and learn more about this. So that should be all. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.